In this series on how I record, edit, and mix my personal audiobooks, let's discuss audio recording software, what to get based on PC or Mac, and the pros and cons of certain software when recording audiobooks. So, where audio recording software is concerned, I've been using SoundForge Audio Studio, originally produced by Sony, but now distributed through Magix.com. I will not use anything else. And you can't make me. <laughs> That's a joke. Seriously, I've seen a lot of audio recording software over the years. And still, SoundForge Audio Studio is my absolute go-to audio recording software. Now, what kind of computer do you have? I have a PC laptop, not a Mac. Do you have a PC or a Mac? Well, SoundForge Audio Studio is only for the PC. Personal computers, non-Mac computers. If you have a PC, I recommend you get SoundForge Audio Studio and not use, drumroll, Audacity. What's the difference? Audacity is free, but, and as they say, you get what you pay for. And I don't like it. SoundForge Audio Studio is a whopping $39.99 one-time pay at the time of this video. Not sure about price changes and stuff like that in the future, but the point is this is very inexpensive. And I bought my software 20 years ago, and I haven't had to make another payment to use the software. Oh, gotta love it. And you can imagine, I've sure made my dollar stretch. Now what's more, I only like Audacity really for mixing, since it's a free program to be honest, but not for recording and definitely not for editing at all. Now real quick, here's what SoundForge Audio Studio and Audacity look like in comparison when recording and editing, just so you can know and see the difference between the two programs. Now this is SoundForge Audio Studio. And to start recording using the software, all I do is go to File, New. And I'll just go ahead and click OK because I want all this. Stereo, 24-bit, 44100, I like all that. That's the default, love it. A new and empty recording window will show up. All I'm going to do now is click this Record icon, and a pop-up window shows up. And I'm going to make sure that my meters look good. Yes, they look good. They're green. I don't see a lot of red. Hey, hey, hey. No, it looks good. And I'm going to click the record icon. Now, when you see this flashing with red, you're recording. And when you record, well, that's when you're getting recorded. <laughs> and you're reading your book, and you're reading a paragraph, and a sentence, and a phrase, and a quote, and the whole chapter, and you're recording it. And when you're done with that section, Go ahead and click the stop button and you will see after you click the close button you will see all the audio that you just recorded and of course this was just a sample recording that I recorded so it's means nothing of course but this is really what it looks like and you know what I could also do I could take this audio window and I can move it around I like that in fact let's say I want to do that and just I want to record something new for whatever reason and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to open up this new window here for recording an audio. I'm going to click the record icon. I'm going to click the icon to record here in the pop-up window. And I'm going to start recording. I'm going to say anything that I was supposed to or I'm reading something or whatever it is that I'm recording. I'm recording it now. Yada, yada, yada. And I'm done. I'll hit the close button. And here is this second audio. So we've got this first audio that I recorded, and we have a second one that I recorded. Now what's nice is I can move this around too. And you know, I'm just giving you a little overview of this software, just a glimpse. I'm going to go into it more detail later. But the concept here is, look how mobile these windows are. I really like that. Multiple audio recordings, very easy to just kind of keep track of. Okay, here's this, here's that, great. And when it comes to editing, I can expand or zoom in and out what I see both horizontally and vertically. I can even expand this window a little bit. Look at this. And I'm using the control plus the wheel on the mouse to expand this vertically and then I can just use the wheel without the control key. Just the wheel to expand this horizontally lengthwise, you know, left to right. And that helps me truly see 
what I recorded and I can truly edit out something that I found was just not right. Ooh, what is this? I'll just go ahead and highlight that and hit the delete key and I'll delete that. Ooh, what's this? Oh, hey, check this out. Ooh, look at that, this snap, which I did. I snapped my finger, you know, and that indicated a mistake. Let's say like the mistake was here. That was the mistake that I made. And I'm going to highlight all this area plus the finger snap and delete. Now when I play it back, it'll play back perfectly. I'm going to go into how to really use this software in an upcoming video, but I just want you to see what it's like to record audio using SoundForge Audio Studio and the nice view you get when it comes to seeing your audio and up close. Let's say I'm going to highlight this and I'm just going to highlight it and I'm going to expand it different ways so I can see it. You cannot do this very well in Audacity and that's one of the main reasons why I don't like Audacity. I love that it's free. I love that it's versatile. I love that you can record and mix and save as a wave or an mp3 and you know I love all that but I just don't like the visual presentation of the software for my needs to record and edit. I like SoundForge Audio Studio. Now let's go take a look at Audacity. Here we are in Audacity and I'm about to record something. So I'll go ahead and hit the record button and you can see it makes a similar visual appearance of the audio that's being recorded. So you can actually see what you're recording. Now what does all this mean? I'm going to go over this in an upcoming video in this tutorial series. But let's stop the audio recording and let's try to edit this. Now I'm going to use the wheel to expand control wheel and I can expand this horizontally, you know, left to right. Not bad, not bad. But what if I want to expand it vertically? You know, like I want to zoom in on something. And you would think that I could use the zoom in, but I'm zooming in, like I said, horizontally. I want to zoom in vertically, you know, going in. You know what? <laughs> I'm sure there's a way if there is, but it ain't obvious. And what's more, I can't really separate this window even though I can, but it becomes a part of the whole software program window. I don't like that. Can you see how SoundForge has the ability to have separate windows that are completely mobile? Completely mobile. I can even shrink them, get them out of the way. And I've done this several times where I was recording something and I just wanted to shrink them, kind of get them out of the way a little bit. And okay, so that was, you know, recording one, recording two, three, four, or whatever. And then I would go and name them, you know, audio recording one, etc. But with Audacity, that is really not the case here. File, new. And what happens? I get a new window, a whole new window of the program. And if I start recording, here I am recording, yada, yada, yada. It's going great. Yeah, uh-huh, great. Stop. Well, just for whatever sake, what if I want to, again, organize the audios I'm recording? Maybe I need another audio open because I'm going to take sections from it. I want the convenience of being able to just see my audio recordings in the same overall software window dashboard and see my multiple audio tracks that are recorded side by side in case I need to take something from here, copy it, and bring it over here for whatever reason. You know, it's really convenient to have these two kinds of windows, you know, multiple windows. Here's a third recording window. Here's a fourth. Here's a fifth. Not that you would want to do this, but we're looking at chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five of your book. This is really cool. Otherwise, in Audacity, all my windows are separated by different windows. I don't like that. And there are other things I don't like about Audacity. But again, it's free. What a great program. It's free. But hey, you know what? You get what you pay for. For me, SoundForge Audio Studio is the winner. I've been using it for 20 years. I won't use anything else. And you can't make me. But what if you have a Mac? How do you use a Windows-based software program on your computer? Well, let me show you how that's done. Now, if you do have a Mac computer, yes, you could use GarageBand, which comes free with your Mac, or you could use Audacity, as they have a Mac version to download for your use, you know, for free. 
And while there are dozens of other audio recording programs out there that you can try, hey, you're free to try them. Or if you already have one you're comfortable using, go for it. If you wanted to get SoundForge Audio Studio to work on your Mac computer, you could purchase Parallels software for the Mac that lets you run Windows on your Mac computer, which then lets you install PC-based software programs like SoundForge Audio Studio. <laughs> Hooray! A solution, right? <laughs> yes, there is a cost to using Parallels, but download it for free to try it out on your Mac. And also download SoundForge Audio Studio for free to try it. See if all these options and solutions work for you if you have an Apple Mac computer. Hey, I hope they do work for you. I would love to know that you're using the same audio recording software that I've been using for 20 years. Do note, in this tutorial series on recording audiobooks and in all my audio recording video tutorials, I'll be using SoundForge Audio Studio recording software. Now, do not fret if you can't get or use SoundForge Audio Studio on your computer like I can. No matter what audio recording software you wind up using, you're going to learn a lot about the whole audiobook recording process in this tutorial series. The lessons I'm going to teach you are practically transferable to any audio recording software because you'll be performing virtually the same functions in all these programs. Record, save recording as a WAV file, edit your recording, mix any music into your audio if you want, or mix something else, resave as a WAV file, and then save as your audio as an MP3 file when you want to upload it to the web or for whatever reason. Well, now that we've discussed audio recording software, and you know my favorite, my go-to software for recording my audiobooks, SoundForge Audio Studio, let's talk about audio recording equipment in the next video tutorial as I'll teach you how to use SoundForge Audio Studio in an upcoming video in this series after we get you a high-quality, studio-sounding condenser microphone to record your audiobook just like I do. And a pair of headphones, if you don't have one already, to listen to all your audio recordings close to your ear for clarity, mistakes, noises that you... Oh, oh, I, oh I just heard something. I better go fix it. All right, come on, let's continue to the next video in this series. You're doing great. Let's keep it up.